Good evening and welcome to the uh, September, November 17th um, curriculum subcommittee meeting of the Brockton School Committee. <clears throat> um, before I read the agenda for the evening, um, I want to read the following statement regarding open meeting law uh, during the pandemic. Due to the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic and state of emergency, on March 12th, 2020, Governor Baker issued an executive order temporarily suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, GL chapter 30A section 20 pursuant to the order, public bodies are temporarily relieved from, open, they're from the open meeting laws requirement that meetings be held in public places open and physically accessible to the public, so long as measures are taken to ensure public access to the body's deliberations through adequate alternative means. This meeting will be held and will be accessible to the public via Brockton Community Access. Brockton Public Schools website, www.bpsma.org, YouTube and Comcast channel 12. The public can access this meeting via the following link, www.youtube.com forward slash the Brockton channels. All right. So first we need to do a roll call vote to establish a quorum. Mayor Sullivan. Yes. Okay, D'Agostino is here. Uh, Ms. Azak. Yes. Mrs. Mendez. Yes. Mr. Minicello. Um, Mr. Rodriguez. Mrs. Sullivan. Yeah. Mr. Sullivan. Tim? Yes. All right. Okay. We have a quorum. Um, the agenda for the evening uh, or for the meeting is um, we'll have a uh, presentation of school-based strategic improvement plans from two of our schools, the Manthala George Junior School and the Pluff Academy School. Um, Superintendent Thomas, I don't know if you wanted to make some comments before our uh, presenters begin. Yeah, thank you, Mr. D'Augustino. So I wanna welcome uh, Principal um, Natalie Pohl uh, from the George School and Principal Michelle Nezrella from the uh, Pluff Academy and also their teams that are with them. Uh, I also wanna thank them and their teams and teachers at, at both schools for how hard they have worked um, on putting these uh, school-based strategic improvement plans together. Um, they work with teams from the Department of Education and also from um, people from central office, but um, I wanna commend the hard work of um, the administrators and the support staff from central and the teachers in each one of these buildings for uh, how much they put into putting these plans together. It's a lot of work um, and a lot goes into these plans and we can't overlook um, how much work and effort was put into them. So we thank you for being here tonight. We look forward to your presentations and June, um, I let you introduce who's up first and we can get going. Yep. Hi, good evening, everyone. So tonight you're going to hear um, the fourth and fifth presentation of what will be 11 in all. And I hope as you listen tonight, what you'll hear are the common threads that you'll hear from both the George and the Pluff, but also connect them to the three prior presentations that um, you've heard in the past few weeks. And so you'll also hear that although each school, again, has gone through a similar process, and you'll hear similarities in their plans, you'll also hear that they're is uh, there is some uniqueness to each school based on their individual school identities. And so the George school is going first tonight and different about the George is that the George has a school redesign grant. And so they are in their second year of implementation. And just to remind you that, that this is the second year of a grant, it's a $300,000 per year grant. So over a three year period. And so I know Natalie and her team are ready to go. So I'm gonna turn it right over to them. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, Mayor Sullivan, Superintendent Thomas, members of the school committee. Uh, I wanted to start with uh, introducing the George School team uh, who is here with us this evening. Um, Inez Enes, our assistant principal. 
everybody's just going to raise their hand. Uh, we have Diane Elks Ninnis. She is our literacy uh, instructional leadership coach for literacy. Uh, Susan Nash is our instructional leadership coach for STEM. And let's see, I hope Gloria got on, but if she's not yet, Gloria Cho is our language acquisition coach. So you may see her coming in. Um, we also have two district liaisons that work with us um, at the George School very closely uh, with our instructional leadership team. Uh, so we have Karen McCarthy uh, is here with us and Vula Rumis from the bilingual department. Vula, let's see, I gotta go to the other screen. There she is. <laughs> And I believe Karen is here too. Um, maybe not yet. Um, so I will get started. I, I'm I think... here, Natalie. Oh, you are. There you are, Karen. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, and I just want to say that uh, we just had our um, renewal interview uh, with the state uh, last week, and we got the good news that we were renewed for a second year of the grant. So we are very excited about that. Um, I believe I have permission to share my screen. So let me start. All right. Now, sometimes in Zoom, when I go into full screen mode, it freezes. If that happens, I may have to, to, un, uh, to, uh, to stop sharing and try it again. <laughs> so um, this evening, I'm gonna kind of, um, take you through some of the things that we presented last year to kind of refresh your memory and also show you um, where we are now in year two. So if you remember um, last year, we talked about our transition uh, as a global study school. And we talked about the, how the school was uh, transitioning with some classes uh, moving to other buildings and the growth of our dual language programs here at the George School. So we've always had the, uh, the Juntos uh, Spanish dual language program. Uh, that program is 19 years old now in Brockton. Um, we've always had a full a strand K to five. Um, we now have the Portuguese dual language program up to grade four, uh, the French dual language program up to grade two. Uh, we still have our sheltered English immersion program six gen ed classes and one special education class. And so you can see we're right in the middle of our transition um, in that global studies model. So I'm just gonna, I wanted to put in a couple of slides here about dual language because this is a really critical part of our plan. Um, we believe that the dual language programs and the global study school model is going to, is a catalyst uh, for school improvement. Um, and it's where we're focusing a lot of our um, time, energy, collaboration, and funds on. So I'm gonna ask Vula to just uh, talk for the next two slides, take us a little bit, just a little highlight of dual language. Vula, are you there? There I am. Okay, Can perfect. Hear me now? Okay. <laughs> yes. It was just a little delay in the audio. Uh, good evening, everybody. Thank you for having us. Uh, again, Vula Rumis. I am the department head, K through eight, in the bilingual ESL and dual language service department. And I have the pleasure of working with Mrs. Pohl and the entire fabulous team at the George uh, School of Global Studies. And um, I wanted to uh, sort of highlight the benefits of dual language here for a few minutes with you. And we've encapsulated the benefits into four key components. Uh, first, there is very strong research about the academic and the cognitive benefits of uh, dual language programs. Uh, physiologically, students' brains are changing as they learn second language and learning all their academics in both languages there are more neurons being created. So besides the physiological, students are uh, able to then flexibly think about uh, problem solving, whether it's mathematics or science, or uh, trying to see a perspective in a language class 
of a, of a character and so forth. So that exercise really uh, generates more uh, cognitive benefits. There's inc increased capacity shown by some of the assessments that I'll talk about in a second on the graph on the right, that all the STEM subjects, math, engineering, uh, science and so forth, have really benefited from students who speak a second language because of that problem solving ability that they have. And more recently, there also have been some health benefits to uh, dual language, that cognitive piece. There has been study now that shows there's a five to seven year delay in the onset of Alzheimer's for those people that have a tendency towards that because they speak multiple languages and those increased neurons, there's, there's a significant delay of that onset. Now, when we uh, talk about the assessments, we really look at what's happening across the country with dual language programs. And one of the studies that we really track is the one done by um, Wayne Thomas and Virginia Collier. Over 12 years, they have uh, surveyed and gone into schools and looked at over thousands and thousands of students. And far and wide, they have seen students in dual language programs, whether they're two-way or one-way dual language programs, far outscore their peers in other kinds of programs. Because of those flexible academic benefits that they're gaining, uh, and over the course of uh, from starting in kindergarten, first grade, all the way to the high school, they see those benefits. And you actually see them around third grade when the kids naturally, developmentally, they start uh, to uh, separate themselves uh, in those assessments. Up until third grade, everybody's pretty much developing. They're learning how to be in school, how to read, what it means to read, and so forth. But those assessments are starting to, to take off. Um, uh, quite a bit and that trajectory is shown. This graph also shows that the commitment and the dedication to staying in a dual language program has long-term effects. Uh, so we commend parents who have that commitment and the kids who are really dedicated to, to staying in a dual language program because the, the benefits uh, are, are very, very long range. Another benefit is pr uh, promoting the positive intergroup relationships. Now, from the beginning, kids co collaborate in dual language programs. They have to make sense of each other by asking for clarity, who's speaking what, what they're talking about. So all that engagement, peer-to-peer, peer-to-teacher, really um, reinforces strong collaboration. And the mentality is, and this is uh, our very important for the George School as well, that everybody has something to contribute. When they're working in a group and solving a problem, everybody brings a talent, whether they speak stronger or they write better or they, uh, they have artistic abilities, all those are, talents are valued. Uh, of course, oh, nobody can argue about the global economy. When you speak a, a, another language or multiple languages, you have better outlook for jobs in every single industry. So that's, that's sort of a given. In our uh, perspective, we also think about our high school students when they reach those higher levels or kids going into the high school, they have ability to get into the higher level courses and language courses much earlier than their peers. Where you have typically kids taking AP courses at the end of their junior or senior year, dual language kids start taking AP courses a lot earlier, some of them as early as sophomore year because they've had that ability to, to do all those um, cognitive and academic skills throughout the years. And the high school kids also are eligible for the state seal of biliteracy, which also gives them a leg up in college and career uh, opportunities. And last is the connections to other cultures. Um, research and in our own experiences, we see that dual language students become very strong community members. Uh, they're invested in their own communities. They're active uh, members. 
they come back to the communities as either entrepreneurs, uh, active community um, in service people. They also come back as investors because they believe in diversity. Next slide, please. That actually brings me now to the major uh, goals of any dual language program uh, and their success. There are three pillars that we really focus on in order to make it a successful program. All three are uh, integral for success. The first one is bilingualism and biliteracy. By bilingualism, I mean uh, kids speaking and understanding each other over a number of years in a continuum. The biliteracy piece of that first pillar has to do with them being able to communicate in reading, writing, speaking, and, li uh, and listening through all their subject areas. And that's where pillar number two comes, grade level achievement. Not only are they doing the language, but that language in all those four domains of reading, writing, speaking, and listening are done in every single subject area. So our students, um, have uh, both languages for language arts, mathematics, science, social studies, enrichment, uh, uh, extra uh, activities. So they're exposed throughout the year in all those subjects in both languages. So they're learning the academic language in both languages. And that's the high level uh, and the rigor that you find in uh, this pillar. And lastly, is that cross-cultural competence. Uh, this is probably the most important. And I dare say sometimes, uh, not here at Brockton Public Schools, but in other programs that we have seen that struggle a little bit, that this pillar really binds everything else together. This is the uh, pillar that um, where all the stakeholders understand uh, and work together for equity and social justice. Understanding and valuing everybody's language uh, and putting them on an equal footing. This is very key. And looking at the similarities and the differences we all have between each other. Uh, and the differences not as a way to separate each other, but looking at the differences as a way and an opportunity to connect with each other and grow from each other. So that is, is really important not to separate each other, but as, as a way to learn about each other. And also this is the pillar where we go beyond that one night a year, that multicultural night. The dual language programs dig a lot deeper. We look at the curriculum where we can infuse that social justice theme, those multicultural aspects and instructional practices that are found across the world. You teach French differently than you teach English uh, and Portuguese and, and Spanish and so forth. There are different authors. So kids are exposed very early to Spanish authors and Portuguese authors and so forth and literature and history and to teach the language in an approach that is appropriate for that language. So these are the key elements that we value and we are trying to grow as the school also grows. And I'd like to add here as my last comment, Brockton uh, is the only district in Massachusetts that has a school such as the Global Studies School here, the George School, where we have brought all the dual language programs under one roof and the entire school has this um, mindset of creating and growing globally minded students uh, in, in all its, uh, in the, to all the three pillars that I just outlined here. So thank you very much. Thank you, Bula. Much. You're welcome. Appreciate it. Um, and if you remember to last year, we talked a lot about the same protocols that you heard from the other schools uh, when we were in year one of our plan. And one of the very first things we do is talk about envisioning the future. Um, what do we want for our students at the George School? What does it mean to be a global studies school? 
Um, so our team had talked about 21st century skills, providing rigorous instruction, having students as active participants in their own learning, of course, the integration of global perspectives and embracing, affirming um, our diversity, the multiple languages and cultures within our building. So I'll just kind of take you through each of our turnaround practices so you can uh, see where our uh, high leverage goals and objectives are and, and what growth we've had in our first year. So in turnaround practice number one, uh, this is the school has established a community of practice through leadership, shared responsibility for all students and professional collaboration. So here we're really focusing on our professional learning communities. And here is just a snippet so you can kind of see, uh, we were lucky enough to have our monitored site visit uh, in March, uh, no, I'm sorry, February, uh, prior to the school closures in March. Um, and we were able to get the report so we could compare um, last year's visit to this year's visit. And in our monitored site visit, they have focus group uh, interviews from, uh, with teams of staff members from across the building. Um, they go into all of our classrooms and do observations. There's a staff survey that's completed and they take all of that. Um, so we were really proud uh, that in turnaround practice one, we showed growth uh, overall. We were in the developing category last year and we've moved to the providing category. And we've moved up on a number of dimensions such as use of autonomy. Um, thinking back to when you approved our uh, change in kindergarten schedule, that was something really different for us last year, something different from the rest of the district. Um, and that use of autonomy uh, was noted in our MSV report. Uh, also high expectations and positive regard moved to sustaining the highest category or indicator rather. Um, it's an indicator and sustaining is the highest category. Um, vision and uh, theory of action moved up to providing. Monitoring implementation moved up to providing. Um, professional development and collaboration moved up as well as uh, sustainability. So we were really happy to see movement uh, in a number of indicators there. For turnaround practice number two, um, here is where we are talking about our intentional practices for improving instruction. And we're, uh, for us, our high leverage goal is all around rigor, providing rigorous instruction for all students. And we have three objectives um, connected to high expectations, teach, uh, high expectations teaching, uh, developing um, strong knowledge of language acquisition and development. And then we also invested um, a a, a large portion of our funds into a new curriculum um, specifically for the dual language programs um, called Benchmark. And so comparing the MSV report, we moved up in overall to the providing category. And then also on several indicators, instructional expectations. Uh, and I do credit that to the work of high expectations teaching uh, where we moved to providing. Identifying and addressing student academic needs moved up to sustaining, using student assessment data at the school level into sustaining and at the classroom level as well as sustaining and structures for instructional improvement moved to providing. Um, so here again, we saw a lot of growth and many indicators in the sustaining category. For turnaround practice number three, um, this is providing student-specific supports and instruction for all students. So looking at the um, uh, tier two and tier three uh, intervention and using data to, um, to drive our instruction and provide those supports. And we, this is a category we're going to um, continue to um, focus more on in our plan. We did move in a couple of our categories um, with teacher training to identify student needs moved up, as well as academic supports for English learner, learners moved up. And then finally, in turnaround practice number four, school culture and climate. Um, here, our first MSV um, report really showed a strong school culture and climate at the George School. Um, so we focused our goal here around increasing student attendance. And 
we were we moved up uh, in safe and supportive learning environments, which wasn't specifically connected to our goal. Um, but I think I've presented at school committee before that we've had a strong partnership with the Trauma Learning and Policy Initiative, uh, TLPI. We were a demonstration school for them about six years ago. Uh, when I first came to the George School, we received a grant and we've had a partnership with them. And even after the grant has ended, they have stayed on with us. They are part of our safe and supportive school team. Um, so the work that we do here um, with that team uh, really helped us uh, to move into that sustaining category. Um, so I'm going to, and I know we only had a half hour and I do have, um, I did bring some video clips of a couple of our dual language classrooms, but I know we're running a little tight on time. So I'll just stop here and ask for if anybody has any questions. Does any member of the committee have any questions? All right, uh, let's see. Mrs. Sullivan, I see your hand up. Hi, thank you very much for um, the presentation, um, Principal Paul and Vula. I'm not sure if I'm saying that right. Uh, my question was, these programs, the dual, the two-way dual, the one-way dual, transitional bilingual education and ESL, uh, where they're taken out, are those all held at the George School, all those pro different programs? So it's, uh, I think you're referring to the, to the graph in the, um, in the presentation. Yes. So we have, um, the Juntos program is our Spanish two-way program. And uh, that program is a two-way program because 50% of the students are model um, Spanish speakers and the other 50% um, model native English speakers. Um, the Portuguese and the French programs that are here are one-way immersion programs, um, which we do not have language models for those mm. particular programs. They're all um, learning the language at the same time together as, as a group. It's a little bit more difficult to find language models for Portuguese and for French. Bula, did you uh, want to add anything to that? No, I, and uh, you referred to Ms. Sullivan to the transitional bilingual programs. Those are available at the middle school and at the high school only, the TBE programs. Okay, not, thank you. Not at the elementary level. Okay. So, so, um, so that graph is really showing that um, of all the different models for uh, instruction for English learners, that the dual language programs are um, superior to other models of instruction. And we were really proud with our access scores that we received this year. 62% um, of our English learners in our dual language programs had met their state targets. So we were, we were celebrating that. Yeah, it's a great, I love the program. Even from the very beginning when it was first formed, I think it's an amazing program um, that the programs at the George School and you all do a great job. Um, my other question was, okay, for the, Portuguese, the French, and the Juntos, um, you said that they start to um, study cultures, like a Portuguese author. I, I don't know if Lula said it. Yes. Um, they start to study about a Portuguese author or um, a French. Some, mm -hmm. it, it goes into studying about the cultures of, of all of these two? Yes, indeed. Uh, the students are exposed to authors at the appropriate uh, grade levels. So they read authentic literature. It's not translated from an English book into Portuguese, French, or, or Spanish. We, we really search for authentic material so the kids are really exposed to the, uh, the, the best and authentic language of each of those target languages. Uh, so our staff and our coaches, all of them, uh, spend quite a bit of time uh, to really research and align uh, books and trade books and materials in the curriculum so that we have a wealth of, of uh, literature from covering all those languages, but also uh, authors beyond these three languages, because we want our students to understand that there are other cultures, there are Asian cultures, there are African cultures, right. and so forth. So we talk a lot about those too. Um, 
and I, again, I know we're tight on time. June, can I show a quick, if I just did 30 seconds of a clip from a, one of our Portuguese classrooms? I see Mike shaking, the superintendent. You have time. You have about seven minutes left. Okay. So here in this story, Mrs. Enos, do you want to just give a quick synopsis of this uh, fairy tale? I think it is. Yep. It's a uh, Portuguese fairy tale, the uh, Fava Oriana. And we have uh, two uh, fourth grade students that are discussing. One is the fairy Oriana and the other student is the tree. And they're discussing some missing birds based on this fairy tale. De Sofia de Melo Brainer Anderson. Diálogo entre a fada Oriana e a árvore. Olá, bom dia. Tudo bem? Ah, quem está a falar comigo? Sou eu, a árvore. O meu nome é Magnolia. E tu, como te chamas? Eu me chamo Oriana. Muito prazer. Obrigado por me manter desprotegido na noite passada. De nada, Oriana. Eu vi que tu estavas ao fim e decidi ajudar-te. Sabe para onde foram os pássaros? Não ouça cantar. Eles foram para os montes. Ok. Muito obrigado, árvore magnolia. And I'm going to stop it, stop it there. But uh, that was one of Professor Nelson's uh, small group, small groups um, in our fourth grade uh, Portuguese um, dual language immersion program. Professor Nelson is a visiting teacher from Portugal. Uh, this is his third year with us, uh, and so all the students in his room are. Um, doing some dramatic readings and I think you could guess who the tree was there in the <laughs> uh, but they, they're doing a great job so we're really excited to share that with you great. amazing job um Mrs. Sullivan, thank you are you all set yeah I, I just um wanted to point out that her their quote about the equity I, I forget exactly how it was worded just um, that dual language education is equity work right that's perfect I love that. Thank you very much for your hard work. Thank you, Mr. Sullivan. You're welcome. Uh, Mr. Sullivan, I believe I saw a hand from you. You're muted. That's the quote of 2020. <laughs> oh, he really ran away. <laughs> All right. Well, we'll. Uh, We'll give him a, a chance if he uh, can. Oh, wait, Tim, you there? I'm back. All right, all right, Mr. Sullivan, please. Not a question, Mrs. Bolt. Just a couple of comments. Number one was your presentation was fabulous. I mean, you left no stones unturned. It looks like you're doing a great job on the turnaround. And the other comment was, I didn't realize the George is the only global study schools in the state. Yes, I was kind of correct. surprised to hear that. There are many dual language programs um, in, uh, well, I shouldn't say many, they're growing uh, in Massachusetts. Brockton was one of the, the first, but we are the only school to have those three language programs under, under one roof. It just did a great job and a nice presentation. Thank you. Thank you. All right, um, Ms. Asak. Thank you. Um, I just want to just uh, actually just make a comment. Thank you so much for the presentation. Um, as always, it's always informative and we are so proud of that program. Uh, I know a lot of families are um, excited about it. And, and do we still have a waiting list? I know at one point there was a waiting list. Uh, families wanting to get in on, you know, try to get um, assigned to the George School because uh, it was so popular. Vula is in charge of that waiting, <laughs> uh, all three waiting lists. She does a great job. <laughs> we do, we do have a waiting list. Um, and yes, we are very proud of, <laughs> of saying that we have a waiting list. Uh, unfortunately, the day of the lottery is probably one of the saddest day for us because not everybody gets into the program. So we, we keep the waiting list active for about a year and a half. 
after kindergarten kids are accepted, just in case somebody moves out of the district, uh, parents can know that we will reach out to them and, and get them into the program. No, it's definitely a wonderful program. And, um, you know, not many people know, but growing up, English was not my first language. And um, so being bilingual has, has definitely has an advantage. Um, and I, I support our bilingual department 110%. So it, it's definitely very important to, to be able to speak more than one language, especially, um, you know, the future. Uh, it, we're, we're helping our students with their future, getting into, you know, companies. And my, my two nieces speak uh, Mandarin, which is amazing. I, I love listening to them. Um, I know that's, I don't think that was one of the choices, Mandarin, but um, they were part of the TAG program. But it's just, it's fascinating just listening to these young students speaking a different language and learning the culture that comes with that language is also very important. So um, thank you so much for just not just teaching them a language, but teaching them the culture around the language that they're learning. So mm -hmm. keep up the great work. We love it. Thank you so thank much. You. Thank you. All right. Um, any other members of the committee want to comment or... All right, then I'll, I'll just uh, comment. Um, great presentation. Thank you for coming this evening and presenting to us. Um, you know, I think we, we know that the, the work you're doing is, is hard work um, and requires commitment of um, everybody in the building, students and teachers and parents and just everybody that, that's involved. And um, so, you know, we know the, uh, the commitment that's involved and, and appreciate, um, you know, all the hard work everybody's doing to, uh, you know, uh, give our students a, a better education. So uh, thank you. Thank you, it was a pleasure being here. And I just wanna also give a shout out to Karen McCarthy, um, who, who again, works with us really closely. Um, she and Vula are at all of our leadership team meetings and um, really provide an, an, an additional layer of support from the district. So we really appreciate them very much. All right. All right. Um, thank you for coming. Thank you for all your hard work. I want to, you know, thank you, your team, your teachers, your support staff. We really appreciate it. Thank you, Mike. Thank you. So I think um, next up we have uh, the Pliff Academy. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. I'm going to share my screen. So please bear with me. Can you see anything? No. Yeah, we can How about see now? Anything. Yeah. Okay. okay, thank you. You're welcome. So, I want to thank Mayor Sullivan, Superintendent Thomas, members of the school committee. Thank you for inviting me to your subcommittee meeting tonight. I'm excited to be here. And this poll, I do commend you and your team for your excellent presentation and for the progress made at the George School thus far. You may not know this, but the George School is a feeder school and I always appreciate the ongoing partnership between me, Mrs. Pohl and our two leadership teams. So to begin, None of the progress thus far made would be possible without the combined and collegial support of our school committee, the superintendent and all members of the E-team, the mayor and his staff at City Hall, and the presidents of each of the unions. Thank you so much for your hands joined approach during these past few months of unprecedented challenges. It is unbelievable how quickly time flies. It was just like yesterday the admin teams from all of the turnaround schools met for the first time at the Keith with our DEA support people. That was three and a half years ago. So right before the pandemic closed schools, right before the pandemic closed schools on March 12th, we hosted three different teams for feedback on teaching and learning at Cliff Academy. 
The feedback in each of the reports, though far from stellar, did recognize the strong camaraderie and the hard work and desire to learn that are evident among the staff and the teachers. Each team also listed recommendations and suggestions so as to improve instruction, leadership, and allocations of resources that need to be addressed. And address them, we did. At the end of the day, it's all about improving instruction so that all students are learning to their fullest capacity. So in any well-written presentation or essay poses and answers these six questions, and I hope to do them justice this evening with all of you. In response to this slide, get ready for an onslaught of alliterative verbs. Simply put, we are doing all of these actions because we want to build upon the strengths to improve day-to-day -day instructional practices so as to best meet the academic and social emotional needs of our students. And onward we go along the road to continued improvement and success, however gradual or quickly that improvement evolves. And certainly teaching and learning in the midst of an active pandemic does make for interesting dynamics and a plethora of outcomes. So I'll give you a moment to review tap number one and our high leverage goal. These can also be found on pages 12 to 15 in the copy of the sustained improvement plan provided to you in your folders. So for common planning time or CPT, of all the objectives in our school improvement plan, CPT serves as the crux, the foundation, and the segue to all other objectives. Without CPT, little can be accomplished. CPT is time for our teachers and staff to collaboratively plan, analyze data, discuss student concerns and strengths. Each week, the staff is sent the agenda, always with a focused purpose about one or more of the initiatives. In your packet, you will see one such CPT scheduled entitled, Working Collaboratively to Change Our Mindset. Along with the agenda, you will see a teacher reflection that poses an identified problem. In this case, students not completing work and assignments and a reflective question, what can teachers do differently in their classes to get students producing and submitting more work? Teachers have a list of questions and activities that hopefully lead to constructive changes in their practice. For strategic number two, objective number two, if CPT is the foundation for our SIP, data analysis techniques are the pillars that hold up the structure. Teachers are using data from a wide variety of sources, STAR Reading and STAR Math and now STAR Spanish for our students in the two-way program. Quizzes and tests using Microsoft Forms, openers and closers, Nearpod, and of course, the data that comes from benchmark testing. Initiatives associated with TAP number two and its high leverage goal can be found in your packets on page 16, 17, and 18. So I'll give you a moment to look at that. Included in your folder is a list of shared expectations for teachers and staff. This list was generated by teachers and finalized by our professional learning community last school year. The elements of an effective lesson plan along with a completed example and a list of observable indicators for teachers and administrators to be used as a, res as a reference for classroom visits and for learning walks. Actively using the what to look for guides which focus on high expectations, rigorous activities, focusing on high order thinking skills and best practices are all part of our sustained improvement plan. On pages 19 and 20 of the copy of the SIP, 
Please find details about tap number three and its high leverage goals. So last year, our high expectations team attended a three day workshop facilitated by John Safier. The high expectations teaching and tapping into student voices was the main focus for the September 14th and 15th PD for our staff at Pluff. An ASD article entitled Teen Voices, What We Really Need From Schools and Chapter Seven of the High Expectations Teaching Book, Choices That Generate Agency, provided initial guidance on increasing student engagement and using the data to provide instructional support. The results from the grade eight Microsoft form survey are provided also for your review. It is our intent to revisit strategic objectives often using the data that is generated from students, teachers, and staff. We are also awaiting PD on providing intentional differentiation and tiered interventions, both from the district and from our upcoming IB trainings. For tap number four, on page 21, you'll see our initiatives for school culture and climate. From the school works report and our IB review, the one strength that was recognized is the strong camaraderie and collaboration amongst the teachers and staff and their overall willingness to learn and adjust practices to provide even more effective student-centered interventions. So this year we are focusing on these four titles. Given the turbulent social dynamics of this past summer, we're focusing our efforts on social emotional learning and equity, diversity, and inclusion, along with building student agency. All of the taps are important. Tap number four allows our learning community to utilize our strong foundation to build upon the initiative so as to affect positive and purposeful change. With contributions from teachers and staff and students, Dr. McDonald, our guidance counselor, has produced and will continue to produce videos that portray the diversity and goals of our learning community. The new teacher book shown here prompted several teams to focus on the importance of honoring one's name. Once the PLC begins to meet, our next task will be culturally responsive teaching and the brain. What has to continue as part of our collective mindset is that teachers make a difference. Teachers make a positive difference each and every day in the lives of students and families. And the more knowledge we have about cultural awareness, racial biases and social injustices and how to best address them, the more effective we will become as a learning community. So the what's were a lot, each day is packed with activity so much so that time flies. The when is ubiquitous. Educators everywhere think about their students all day long, every day. And if they aren't thinking about the kids, they're thinking about the lessons. Teachers carry this all the time in their hearts and minds. As you know, teachers and staff are working studiously, both at school, and at home. Using our district provided tech platforms. And right here, I do want to send a huge shout out to Dan Vigent and his incredible tech team for providing the training and the tablets to all students, teachers, and staff. Dan and his team have been amazing. And as stated earlier, our teachers and staff teach from their hearts and minds. Teaching is, after all, a balance of art and science. I love this proverb. So let's give rounds of applause to our parents, guardians, and families, to all of the parents and guardians, absolutely, and to grandparents, aunties, uncles, and siblings who have taken on the responsibility 
of our students learning remotely from home to not only help them remain focused and engaged, but also who are learning the new technologies themselves. We are so proud of our kids. Nobody could possibly imagine the, the drastic changes to our day-to-day -day routines. And our students are adapting and are holding their own. With weekly phone calls and emails being sent by teachers, especially on Wednesday and Friday afternoons, we hope to increase our student engagement even more. With the chat enhanced raised features of Teams and with MS apps such as Nearpod, teachers can see which students are actively engaged. This sample is from Ms. Senior's grade eight algebra class. With this slide, students watched a video and answered the question, which way did the shape rotate? Using Nearpod provides a quick ticket to leave or comprehension check for Ms. Senior and for other teachers. Ultimately, this is what we want our kids to know. With thanks to Ms. Brady, who is my go-to person for everything technology, our staff members are the ones who help our students realize that yes, I am possible. So we recently used this diagram during a Monday school-based PD session. When asked for reactions from our staff, overwhelmingly the student, the, the response was the student is at the center, the student is safe in a protected learning environment, there's a continuous rotation, there's an equal part in educating the child, but this one answer from our grade seven ELA teacher, Ms. Wood, encapsulated our collective responses. Our PLUF teachers and staff are the community that encircles our students to assist them with their education. We are their village. I do wanna give kudos to our support staff our MTAs and paras, coaches, admin assistants, mentors, and custodial teams who provide an additional layer of support for our kids and for our teachers and staff. To our cafeteria team, thank you, because we all know that you can't feed a hungry kid and your services and providing meals are deeply appreciated. And of course, our teachers, Bertrand Russell once stated that teachers are more than any other group, the guardians of civilization. Educators the world over ensure that the next generations appreciate the arts and sciences and pieces of literature, the pillars of any society. As the most noble of all professions, teachers make all other professions possible. And our teachers at Plouffe demonstrate their grit, growth and their grace every single day. So in order to make a plan, we have to have our movers and shakers. And we have various teams of people at Plouffe. Members participated, as we said earlier, in a three-day workshop in the fall. Their primary emphasis this year will be on demonstrated focused effort with grit and a growth mindset. The PLC will participate in a 15 hour IB online training and in turn use the train the trainer model to facilitate focused discussions around the principles, practices and philosophy of IB with their colleagues. Content facilitators will also take the lead with book talks, unit planning and maximizing the use of new resources and programs. This team is invaluable with their variety of professional experiences and areas of expertise, we were able to write a plan that is doable and measurable. I deeply appreciate the depth and breadth of knowledge and expertise that each person brought to the table. So these are the individuals who have a pulse on the entire school. It is to these people that teachers and staff turn to with questions, concerns or quandaries. And by closely working together and appreciating the other for their unique gifts, solutions and approaches are generated and discussed and implemented. 
And of course, I have to give kudos to my administrative leadership team. The building is always in capable and competent hands with Ms. Brady and Mr. Westcott standing at the helm with me. Whenever I'm out of the building or unavailable for whatever reason, the day carries on with their combined leadership, presence, and experience. So we're doing a lot. How are we doing all of this? This is our power statement that is part of our plan. We generated this several years ago and it still holds true. How are we doing is a totally different question. This is one of the most important questions. Plans are just words on a page. It's the people who are involved in the process who bring any plan to life and ensure its success. During the November 2nd school-based PD session, Ms. Brady created a Neopod presentation that focused on technical problems versus adaptive challenges. We focused on this because on any given day, staff members experience the range of varying emotions found in this chart. And that is okay and expected given the circumstances. We are teaching with new challenges and we want to address the importance of teacher mindset and system of beliefs. So from that Neopod presentation, I'm showing one slide with one result. The question is which of the following will be most difficult for you? As you can see, F, accepting that change takes time and will not happen immediately, and E, being willing to experiment, trying new things and thinking outside my typical box gathered the highest number of responses. Our staff, as stressful as the times are, are willing to always try new things and think outside their box. And for that, I'm very, very proud of them. As was emphasized recently in a self-care PD led by Dr. Booth, breathing is therapeutic. I should do that right now. At the beginning of this year, during our first staff meeting, knowing that the lift would be incredibly heavy and daunting, I asked my staff to finish this sentence. This sentence is, this year, let's all please remember to blank. And Gina Lopes, our art teacher, captivated our sentiments so succinctly with this phrase, which has become a mantra at the Plouffe Academy. So of all the questions, this is the most important and the most difficult to answer. In spite of the challenges, in spite of the difficulties, the novelties, the remote learning, in spite of all of it, our teachers want to make a difference in the lives of kids. They themselves want to be that inspirational teacher whom we all had when we were kids in school. They want to teach because they themselves love learning. And as seen here in a bulletin board display at the PLUF, we believe in our kids, in their abilities, capabilities, we believe in their potential and in their future. So several weeks ago, Dr. Kensell taught a lesson as part of Miss Senior's math class. As he said, it was part math, part philosophy. Find your nine, find your purpose, Reflect upon and zero in on what's going to get you up in the morning and what's going to get you to embrace each day. And I always love having Ethan on my team because he thinks in a way that invites different perspectives. So it's always a good idea to find your nine again. And I want to share mine with you. Years ago, I traveled to Eastern Europe and our last stop was in Prague, a beautiful city. The Child's Bridge is a medieval structure which crosses the Vitlava River. And on this particular day, there were hordes of musicians, artists, vendors selling their wares. There were tourists and residents. It was an onslaught of sights and sounds. And as I meandered my way along, my ears picked up on a piece of music. And when I turned around, 
I saw a lone cellist completely absorbed in his playing of Beethoven's Ode to Joy, which I hope you can hear it now. A classical piece that is timeless, glorious, and inspiring. And as I stood there, totally in awe and completely humbled by the magnificence of that singular moment, I thought to myself that one day, I'm going to bring my two nieces and nephew to Prague so that they too can have a moment such as this one, a moment filled with splendor, reverence, and humbleness. And then I thought, no, there was the epiphany. Not just my nieces and nephew. I want every single student who walks through the doors of Plouffe Academy to experience that kind of moment, to be wonderstruck, to stand in reverence, to be lost in an experience. I want our kids to see their future and their place in the world as being one which is positive, passionate, and purposeful. I want our kids to literally have the world in their hands because they are deserving of the opportunities that our amazing world holds for them. And they are most deserving of our hard work, our love, our sacrifice, and our hopes for them. Thank you. All right. Um, anybody on the committee have any questions or comments? So we'll give a second so I can see it. There we go. Um, all right. We'll start with Mrs. Sullivan, please. <laughs> yep. Judy, you're muted. There we go. I want to thank Ms. Nazarella. Sorry about that. Um, for her awesome presentation. Um, I just wanted to point out um, her mentioning of the high expectations teaching and her tapping into students' voices, the teen voices. And I've visited Cliff Academy loads of times. I go to their PTA meetings. And this is really Ms. Nazarella and her staff. They truly value the children and they want to hear what the kids are saying. They want to know what's going on. When visitors come to the school, you know, they, the, the kids welcome you. And she, she goes over all that, her and her staff. And she always gives uh, kudos to her staff because she knows that it can't be done, just her. And I love how she pointed out um, the social, emotional, and equity, diversity, and inclusion parts of also the culturally responsive teaching. So Ms. Nazarella, great job. Thank you, Ms. Sullivan. And you have always been a constant presence at all of our meetings, our grade eight award ceremonies. Deeply appreciate your commitment to our learning community. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, thank you, Judy. Any other member of the committee want to um, comment? Uh, Mr. Sullivan? Yes, Ms. Nazarella, I just, just wanted to thank you for the great presentation. You really outdid yourself this time. It's probably the best presentation I've ever seen. And I just thank wanted you. to mention that you all, you passed the buck and you give all the credit to everybody else, but you deserve a lot yourself. You, I think you do a great job. Thank, Thank you, you, Mr. Sullivan. A leader is only as good as the people surrounding him or her. And um, I am surrounded by wonderful people. They make me look good. And you make them look good. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Mr. Sullivan. Any other member of the committee? I see Ms. Asak. Thank you. I just wanted to um, thank you, Ms. Nasrella. As always, it's always informative. And you always um, provide us with so much information about what's going on at your school. Um, and I just want to say thank you again for, for the wonderful presentation and keep up the great work. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you for your support, Ms. Azak, for your backpacks, the school supplies every year at the beginning. Our kids need those. 
and they come in so incredibly handy. So I appreciate your time and effort as well. Thank you. Thank you. Any other member of the committee want to weigh in? Um, okay. I just want to thank you, um, you know, for joining us tonight and for the presentation. Um, and uh, certainly, again, you know, we know with schools and turnaround that uh, it's a lot of hard work, um, but it is a, a total team effort. And um, I know that the uh, PLIF is no different. And, um, you know, so you, you are, everybody there is working, working very hard and we know that and we appreciate that. I did want to mention that, uh, you know, that the, uh, the PLIF is definitely a school that, um, you know, people in the city, um, you know, like, and, and I hear that from parents. Um, I definitely have had calls in the past of, of you know, parents that uh, sought out the PLIF and um, so you're doing a lot of good things there and the community knows that and recognizes that. So uh, keep it up and, uh, you know, please, you know, uh, let, let your team there know that, you know, we know how hard they're working and we appreciate it. Thank you, Mr. D'Agostino for your kind words. Okay. Um, if there's nothing else uh, on this. Thank you, Michelle. Thank you. Thank team. you, Superintendent. Appreciate Thomas. it. Thank you very much. Have a good Thank night, you. everyone. All right. Um, do we have anything under other business to come before curriculum? Superintendent, anything for you? Um, no, that's it. June, do you have anything on the other business? No, that's it for tonight. Thank you, everyone. Okay. So um, with that, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. We have a motion to adjourn by Mrs. Sullivan, properly seconded by Ms. Asak. I will call the roll. Uh, Mayor Sullivan. Yes. Okay. Uh, I'm a yes. Ms. Asak. Yes. Mrs. Mendez. Yes. Mr. Minicello. Yes. Mr. Rodriguez. Yes. Mrs. Sullivan. Yes. Sullivan. Yes. Yeah. All right. We are adjourned. Don't forget we have our full committee meeting at uh, seven o'clock. Thank you, everyone.